I've maintained for a long time now that according to a map I saw and used on an alien mobile fortress, a giant city in space, Andromeda was smaller than the Milky Way, about two thirds the size. 50 years of science and astronomy says that Andromeda is massive, three times or more the size of the Milky Way. For 50 years, all their instruments and measurements agreed. I'm an astronomer and an astrophysicist. I'm not ignorant of their beliefs and evidence. But despite the gaslighting and attacks by pseudoscience cultists for saying it, I know what I saw. And then, long after I'm on the record saying it publicly, new tools were used and new measurements were made. And the world's united consensus on science and astronomy came to realize that they made a catastrophic error and had it all wrong. Correcting their mistake, they made new measurements and determined that Andromeda was now the exact relative size I said it was, bullseyeing it at about two thirds the size of the Milky Way. Here you can see some historical evidence of that. What are the chances I'm making this up? I've maintained for a long time that according to my interactions with non-human people from other worlds on an alien mobile fortress, a giant city in space, radio waves were not usually used for long distance communication. The only exception I saw was very long-term intergalactic messages sent back and forth between Andromeda and the Milky Way with highly sensitive equipment in deep space, which required millions of years to reach the destination and so much resources that only a galactic government would have the resources to send them in the first place. But for shorter range galactic messages, radio waves weren't used, uh, not because they were public and easy to decrypt, but because they were considered unreliable due to unpredictable interference. While various factors in space are involved, the greatest factor was the unpredictable nature of solar flares and the effect they had on an unstable bubble that surrounded every solar system, where messages would often get scrambled passing through such a bubble. And while it was possible to send messages, even the most stable of stars were still too unreliable to send important messages only to wait hundreds or thousands of years to find out if it was even received. This is why it is the way it is in my story, that messengers are always sent in person. And contrary to popular belief, many scrambled signals have been discovered by those who listen on this world. And the likes of SETI were caught covering up and deleting a massive data dump of those signals which is why they lost their funding and quietly disappeared. In recent times, the Voyager probes confirmed everything I said when they both detected the bubble I described, where the solar wind collided with the galactic wind with temperatures hotter than the sun. A huge spike in interference, downtime on the Voyager probes and a barely usable connection to them on the other side of the bubble, proving the effect I said all along, and proving why messengers are required in person, just like in my story. What are the chances I'm making this up? I've maintained for a long time that according to the map I saw and used on an alien mobile fortress, a giant city in space, I saw a big nebula, a cloud in space, near Andromeda, on the left, that appeared into view as I moved close to it while navigating the map. I asked them if they ever sent a message there, and they told me they did a long time ago, but it was considered of no interest and devoid of light. Here you can see the invisible nebula that certainly didn't exist actually does. They found it just recently, days ago actually, 
in the same place, the same size and the same shape. It turns out it only appears when looking at specific wavelengths of light, which might be why it appeared into view only when I moved near it while zooming into Andromeda. What are the chances I'm making this up? I have maintained for a long time that according to the map I saw and used on an alien mobile fortress, a giant city in space, there are two large, very faint clouds above and below the Milky Way, with the one on the bottom being far more elongated than the top. Years after I said it, they discovered both clouds. Just as I said, although they don't have a good shape and scale of them yet, they do confirm the bottom one is elongated. What are the chances I'm making this up? I've said so many other things about things in space, events across time, in the past and the future. I can answer almost any important question. For example, I've maintained for a long time that North Africa and the Middle East weren't a desert until about 6,000 years ago. Since I said it, geological records and piles of evidence have been revealed proving that it just happened suddenly and unexplainably about 6,000 years ago. The estimation they give being 6,500 years. I explained in my story what actually caused it. The galactic government sent a military force to get rid of the meddlers who weren't allowed to be here. They used scorched earth tactics. I've given places, times and events in history, even coordinates that have all been consistently discovered over and over in intricate detail to how I said it. There are too many to name. I've never been proven wrong, consistently proven right. I've gone against all the so-called narratives and so-called evidence only to be proven right in the end, over and over again. I don't think there are any contentions left of any disagreements with anything that I've said. They've all been proven right. But there's no one in good faith left to prove it to. That is, uh, no one left in good faith that doesn't already know and believe what they have seen with their own eyes. What are the chances I'm making all of this up? And what is the imminent cost if you're wrong? And what if I am right? What then? What are you going to do? I may disappear in a few days.